Richard Falk is the UN Special Rapporteur on the Occupied Palestinian Territory. He speaks to us now from Santa Barbara in California. Professor Falk, thank you for being with us. Even though we are speaking here not of the Occupied Palestinian Territories, but the Occupied Syrian Territories, I believe the, the legal parameters remain largely the same. What are the obligations of the occupying force, in this case Israel, when it comes to the civilian population living under occupation trying to enter that territory? The most fundamental obligation of an occupying power is to use minimum force in maintaining its security during a period of occupation. And I think that this incident again shows the Israeli disposition to maximize the use of force and to disregard its fundamental obligation uh, to avoid excessive violence in addressing an unarmed demonstration of the sort that this appears to have been. And the fact that there are UN troops there, would you say that uh, they should be investigating this incident? Yes, of course. This, this incident is again a illustration of Israeli defiance of international legal obligations, international morality, and an effort to intimidate unarmed uh, demonstrations against an unlawful and persistent prolonged occupation. And it also involves refugees who've been living generation after generation under conditions where their rights have been completely eliminated. The, uh, the, the Israelis call it uh, their border. In fact, it is the Alpha line, the demarcation line. Since 1974, the UN has been deployed there, as many as almost a thousand uh, peacekeepers. And the UN Security Council, it should be uh, noted as well in its resolution 497, condemned Israel's annexation of the territory in 1981. Is what Israel is trying to do in addition to blatantly disregarding international law, also try to avoid any publi publicity given to this uh, situation in the Golan Heights. After all, a lot of people talk about the situation in the West Bank and what's going on there, but very few people have this issue on their radars. Yes, I think that, th that this is a renewal of uh, interest and concern about the situation on the Golan Heights that has been marginalized over the years, partly because uh, Syria hasn't uh, pushed very hard. The few attempts at negotiating the Israeli withdrawal have turned out to be unsuccessful. Uh, but the basic uh, message here is that the Palestinians have been re-energized, I believe, by the Arab Spring and they are not prepared to be as acquiescent as they've been in recent years to the continued uh, occupation and the continued denial of their basic rights. And what do you make of the U.S. position? The U.S. State Department has issued a statement in which it said it was deeply troubled by the events, but where it also clearly put the onus on the protesters by saying that uh, provocative actions like this should be avoided. It goes on to say that Israel, like any sovereign nation, has a right to defend itself. Is Israel defending itself by shooting at protesters across an occupied territory? I think it's very misleading to talk about this in terms of defense. Uh, Israel has demonstrated over and over again that if it wants to, it has the means to non-violently control uh, de angry demonstrations. It does this all the time with uh, settlers who uh, exhibit much more violence than was exhibited by these people at the border. So this was a calculated effort to uh, enforce their claim to the border by relying on uh, lethal violence against unarmed demonstrators and sends again the message to the world that Israel is not prepared to live up to its obligations under international law and that it will uh, act in a way that shows no respect for the right to life of people living under its control.
Professor Richard Falk, it's uh, as always great to talk to you. Thank you very much.